Hello Europe, it's William calling from Wooby Blogs, and as all of you know, the race to represent Cyprus at Eurovision 2015 is heating up, and CYBC has just broadcast the third episode of the Eurovision Song Project 2015. Now today we're excited to get in on the action as well, and are joined by two very special guests. The first is our Greece correspondent, Billy. Hello Billy! Hi everyone! <laughs> And our star this morning is the lovely and talented Maria Evangelou, one of the talented singers who passed through the first audition of episode one. Hello, Hello. Maria. Hi. <laughs> We're so excited to talk to you. Thanks for having me. No worries. And you know, we were quite confused and intrigued because you live in London and you're competing in Cyprus. That's um, right. And your name suggests you may be from the region. So could you tell us about your background? Uh, yeah, well, all my family are of Greek Cypriot origin um, and I do have a lot of uh, relatives that live in Cyprus as well so I come and go quite a bit for holiday and family events and things like that so I've, I've got a lot of um, background over there as well. Fantastic, so you make it over quite a bit? Yeah, fair, fair amount. <laughs> and do you prefer Cyprus or uh, Great Britain? What is your Cyprus opinion? or? Cyprus or London? What is your oh, favorite place to go? That that's a hard uh, that's a hard one to answer. They both uh, got their own uh, things that's special about them. So I couldn't possibly choose between either or. <laughs> Now, obviously, you've entered uh, the Eurovision Song Project in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. What led you to do that? Um, I saw the advert for it, and then somebody uh, sent me a message and said, "Why don't you, you know, enter your your stuff as well? They're seeing what I do and the, the music and activity that I've been doing over here in London with my own music." And uh, I had to think about, it and I thought, well, "Why not? You know, it'd be a cool thing to do." Um, I like writing music anyway, so <clears throat> but it was a bit of a, like a last minute dash to get everything in on time because I, I heard about it at a bit last minute dot com style. <laughs> <laughs> so you have two competing entries, That's uh, right, yeah. Still and Play Me Like a Pop Song. We've yeah. heard only the first one. Uh, That's could right, you tell yeah. us more about them? Um, still, I co wrote with. Um, uh, another girl that I know. Um, it's a very kind of retro, uh, retro pop kind of throwback type song. I wanted to do something that was a little bit like different, alternative to what Cyprus has entered in for the competition before. Um, and and it's still in keeping with the kind of style of music that I like to write as well. Um, Play Me Like a Pop Song. <clears throat> it was not actually written by me. Um, it was a song that was uh, given to me to sing. Um, again, another we kind of changed the arrangement of it and stuff and made it a little bit more retro as well, which you'll you'll hear. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And it's probably like a mother choosing between her children. <laughs> but yeah. which song is, um, I guess, more special to you? Oh, again, I can't choose between the two. They've both got their own kind of uniqueness to them um, and uh, and their own kind of personality and style. So it just depends what you're into kind of thing. Some people like Steel more, some people like Play Me Like a Pop Song more. It depends kind of what you're feeling. How long did it take you to come up with Still? Was it quite quick or did you spend a lot of time stressing out over it? Uh, well, we literally I, it was kind of like in a semi-done state um, and the deadline was fast approaching so there wasn't really time to uh, hang about but because it's in a style that I like writing in it, it wasn't hard to kind of finish off the music um, and, and stick it all together so yeah it was, it was quite a fun song to work on and it, it's, I really like it and what do you think about the other entries in the national selection so far? There are many different styles. Yeah, and it's quite a mix. And have you got on with some artists already? 
Uh, yeah, I made friends with a couple of people there. I didn't get to meet um, kind of everybody auditioning, so I'm kind of watching it along with you guys really, and and seeing uh, what the rest of the competitions like. <laughs> Um, but everybody definitely has their own style. It's really uh, good and encouraging that you know so many people are enthusiastic about entering their songs into the competition, and that there's so many uh, different talented people, you know, putting their stuff forward. And, and it's it's hard putting your stuff out there and then just letting the public <laughs> go at you because uh, yeah, it's a bit of an arena. But I think it's really really great and. Um, uh, it's, I wouldn't like to be a judge. <laughs> it's quite a mixture to choose from. Um, I did make a couple of friends. Valance, who was on uh, last week's one, I believe. I made friends with him. He was really cool. So, yeah. And speaking of the judges, um, they're the ones who'll decide who makes the final this year. And there's yeah. no public vote until that point. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think about that rule? Is it good that the judges are choosing the finalists? Uh, I think... I think for this part of the process, yes, because there's so many uh, songs that you need to kind of narrow it down to, and it's good to have people that uh, understand, that have been there before, uh, that know what they're doing, um, that can critique you the right way, and then give the public an understanding of, um, you know, what their process is as well. So they're not just saying no or yes, no, they're explaining why. and. Um, I, I think for, for the overall, there's a lot of songs to get, get down, you know. So I think, yeah, for, for, the, for this part, I think it's a good idea. Uh, were the judges uh, helpful? And what, uh, who is your most uh, favorite? <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, the, the, the judges were very helpful. Um, I appreciated all the feedback that I got. I, I like to get feedback, take it on board and use it to uh, make myself a better artist, a better songwriter, a better performer. Um, so I really do appreciate any feedback that they give me. Um, Favourites, they're, they're all pretty cool to be honest. They were all nice to me, so <laughs> can't really choose. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, outside of Eurovision, you've had a lot of success as well. Um, you have a single Mr. Right, which has been yeah. doing really well. Could you tell us about it? Yeah, Mr. Right um, is like my baby. <laughs> it was released um, as a single in the summer this year. It got played on over 57 UK radio stations over the summer, um, and it got some really, really good press. It's my, it was my debut single release in the UK, and um, I'm really happy with, with the feedback that it got, um, and yeah. Could we hear a line or two from it? <laughs> I'm, I'm just getting over um, a flu, but I can give you a line if you want. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I can clean my throat. Sitting at home, waiting for you to call. Watching the hours passing by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have known that you were at me down. Oh, oh. All of the times you made me cry Now I'm gonna fly away To find my Mr. Right Yeah, yeah, yeah Who will keep me by his side Yeah You should represent the UK <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, uh, you've been compared to Amy Winehouse and Duffy. Uh, are they musical influences to you? Um, well, they're certainly in the same genre as me, and they're both great, great artists. So, it's, it's lovely to be put in the same category. Um, and those artists have definitely opened doors for performers like myself that sing in a similar genre of music. Um, I'd say my main influences are like throwback sounds to the 50s and 60s, Motown, soul, jazz, Nina Simone, um, Etta James, Smokey Robinson, all those kind of singers. But even modern singers now, Bruno Mars is a big influence. Um, I absolutely 
love him um, and what he's doing now and it's and it's very kind of retro funk so um, yeah it's, it's lovely to be put in the same category as them um, but I try to still steer my music so that it's got a signature of me in it as well oh, that's great and you obviously lead a band um, yes could you tell us about your band and how you met your bandmates Oh, well, my band, I put them together uh, when I was asked to do the International Pop Overthrow Festival. Um, and I needed some guys to back up, uh, back me up and, and play all my stuff, basically. So uh, I was very fortunate in finding the members that I have now. Um, they're all a really good team. They love my music and um, everyone kind of bounces off each other when we're playing on stage. So it's a really good vibe on stage. I love... Um, as much as I love doing like smaller acoustic gigs as well, sometimes I'm just with my keys player or guitarist. When I've got the whole band there, it just adds another kind of dimension to the music and, and you can hear how it kind of sounds on the track as well, brings everything to life. So it's, it's really, really good fun when I get to play with them. And if you made it to Eurovision, would you take them with you? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, and, and I think that's the... the the only thing that I say was missing from that audition is that you can't really get a, a true, true vibe of how the music is meant to sound without that band being there because you need kind of the backing singers doing their whole, you know, 60s kind of jam thing <laughs> and you need the guitars and, and the drums and it's a whole different vibe with the band there. It's not really music that's meant for... Uh, a backing track if you know what I mean it's a very it's kind of funky music it makes you want to get up and dance and uh, yeah it just adds another dimension so I would absolutely love to take the band to Eurovision and have a jam on stage with them <laughs> so uh, we wish you go far in the Eurovision Song Project thank you and what are your hopes for the future I hope so the future. I've got lots of things planned for the next year in the pipeline, more festivals and performances. Uh, we're writing more music at the moment, which will be released next year as well. Um, and just to hopefully keep building my fan base and um, get industry attention and, um, you know, a record deal. <laughs> And we're slightly in error because we asked you to sing Mr. Right, but we didn't ask you for a sample of Still, which we've already... Oh, could, could you give us I, a taste? I don't think my, my vocals are up to singing <laughs> Still at the moment because I'm recovering from a cough. Oh, no worries, no worries. Um, I guess as a final question, do you have anything to say to the Cypriot voters who might be watching this? Uh, yeah, I hope you like my songs and... Um, Vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I were in Cyprus, I would. <laughs> well, Maria, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Thank you. And um, Billy, thank you as well. Uh, I thank you and best of luck to the first year challenge. Thank which you. Which is the first semi-final. Great. Well, you can all watch Maria on the Eurovision Song Contest in Cyprus. The auditions continue all leading up to the final on February 1. Be sure to check Wubi Vlogs for links to the show. And if you're in Cyprus, be sure to pick up the phone and vote. Thank you so much, guys. See you. Bye. Bye.